smaller streams and creeks in Alberta have had habitat impacts occur that reduce the ability of native fish to spawn and eggs to survive through to fry emergence. There are native salmonids and char in Alberta that are now considered species at risk. West Slope Cutthroat Trout, Bull Trout, Athabasca Rainbow Trout, and Arctic Grayling quickly come to mind. As part of restoration efforts in Fisheries Branch, specific stream and creek assistance can now occur thanks to the creation of a quarantine rearing unit at Allison Creek Brood Station. The quarantine unit is based on a wheeled trailer. While at present it's being used as an on-site quarantine unit, it could be moved to other sites within a watershed or used in conjunction with generator power in the field on site for specific purposes. Currently the unit is being used for the Pure Strain West Slope Cutthroat Trout Restoration Project. Biologists can target streams and tributaries that have abundant populations, pure strains, or other criteria. The unit allows them to take eggs, to assist increasing egg survival, increase fry emergence and survival in a stream, or to reallocate eggs from one stream to a nearby sister stream in the upper reaches of a watershed. The unit works extremely well when targeted to restoration work specific to a geographically tight watershed region. Being a quarantine unit, there are stringent biosecurity protocols maintained at all stages from the stream to the unit and back again. The trailer contains a pumped, recirculating, closed loop water system maintained at 10 degrees Celsius by an onboard cooling unit. There is a solids filter system and periodic addition of fresh water. An onboard UV unit filters out viruses and pathogens and pumps ensure adequate flow through the entire system. While the unit is monitored daily, there are alarms in case of malfunction. The primary purpose of the quarantine unit is to incubate fertilized eggs collected from wild stocks. Egg survival through to fry emergence is low in the wild, about 10%. Being isolated, the variables that limit success can be specifically targeted in the quarantine unit to maximize the successful incubation of wild stock in excess of 70% emergence. Fisheries technicians electroshock target streams during the spawning season. Ripe males and females are collected in special holding units. Once the required number of males and females have been collected, eggs and milt are collected and mixed. The fertilized eggs are allowed to water harden and prepared for transportation to the incubation unit. It's important to note that there may be fewer than a dozen wild female trout that contribute to the egg collection. There may be only 1200 eggs brought in to incubate from any project. Given the cold upper watershed streams where these projects are occurring, the females are typically 20 centimeters in length with low fecundity. One female may only have 150 eggs. The numbers are generally low, which is normal for these locations. Upon arrival at the unit, the eggs are disinfected and the stream water they were transported in destroyed. The eggs are counted and female fecundity assessed. This helps biologists in future planning for that stream. The eggs are put into incubation trays with a constant flow of water to remove CO2 and any other impurities, as well as to provide oxygen to the eggs. Between fertilization to the eyed stage, eggs are extremely sensitive and can't be touched or moved and remain isolated in these incubation trays. Once the eggs eye up, the blank eggs can be removed in order to minimize any impurities that could lead to fungal infection of the lot. The eggs are typically incubated to the eyed egg stage. The quarantine unit can manipulate eye updates by changing water temperature and delaying or speeding up delivery date as needed due to environmental conditions of release location and timing. These eyed eggs are then placed in egg tubes and packed in insulated shipping containers. They're transported back to their natal streams to be placed in remote streamside incubators that the fry swim out of at the swim up stage.
survival to the swim up stage using this method has been as high as 80%, where wild stock survival may only be 0 to 5%.